I am the son of grease-covered calloused hands and comb and scissor-holding painted nails. I am the son of warm summer nights and running barefoot in the grass. I am the son of four acres and well water. I am the son of cabbage and noodles and car paint fumes. I am the son of holy water and rosary beads. I am the son of old school ways and follow the rules. I am the son who shed those ways and bent those rules. I am the son of bright stage lights and dancing music notes. I am the son of book covers and turning pages. I am the son of coffee shops and a scrawling pen. I am the son of self-determination and unflinching authenticity. I am the son. Production funding for Poetry Out Loud was provided in part by Poetry Out Loud State Finals. Thank you for all coming. Thanks to educator, performer, and writer Brian Lane for kicking off the proceedings with his original work, I Am the Sun. I'm Reggie Kibiko, your host for today's event. By way of introduction, I am a poet, published author, and spoken word artist. In fact, I am the first Asian American poet to win the New Yorkian Poets Cafe Grand Slam and a three-time National Poetry Slam finalist. I am also a teaching artist for the Virginia Commission for the Arts and the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. Look for my most recent collection of poetry, A Rabbit in Search of a Rolex, forthcoming from Day 8 Press. I am thrilled to be here today. This year, marks the first in the last three since COVID-19 impacted our world that we are welcoming a live audience. <laughs> and as always, the competition will be judged live to select the Virginia State Champion. Today's recording and broadcast of Poetry Out Loud was made possible because of a number of partners and sponsors who will be acknowledged and recognized later in the program. Poetry Out Loud is a national recitation program sponsored by the National Endowment for the Arts and the Poetry Foundation, immersing high school students in the powerful language of poetry. Poetry Out Loud provides students an opportunity to master public speaking skills, build self-confidence, and learn about their literary heritage through classical and contemporary works of poetry. Each of today's 12 contestants competed in semi-final competitions. The three highest scoring students from each of those competitions were invited to compete at the state level. 
the champion of today's state final will receive $200 and the opportunity to compete for the top prize of $20,000 in the national finals, which will be held in Washington, D.C., May 8th through the 10th. Both events will stream live on arts.gov. The state champion will also receive $500 for the purchase of poetry books for their school. The first runner-up will receive $100 and a $200 stipend for their school library. There are three rounds to today's competition. Each student will recite their poem in the recitation order as they are listed in the program for the first two rounds. Three students will advance to round three and the two overall highest scoring recitations will be Virginia State Champion and first runner up. Students will be announced by the MC and me and will approach the microphone. Each student will identify their poem and author before beginning their recitation. If at any point during the recitation, a student loses his or her place, they may request assistance from the prompter by saying, line. We are appreciative of the expertise of our judges with us here today. Three of our judges will assess students on their physical presence, voice, and articulation, dramatic appropriateness, level of complexity, evidence of understanding, and their overall performance. One judge serves as accuracy judge, identifying any inconsistencies between the written text and the spoken word. I would like to take the time briefly to introduce you all to our judges. Our performance judges include Danielle Badra, who was recently named Poet Laureate of Fairfax County. She achieved her MFA in poetry from George Mason University in 2017. Her poems have appeared in multiple publications and in her first chapbook, Dialogue with the Dead, a collection of contrapuntal poems in dialogue with her deceased sister. Her manuscript, Like We Still Speak, won the 2021 Ethel Adnan Poetry Prize. Nathan Brewer attended Washington and Lee University in Lexington, where he majored in classics and medieval studies. He has had the opportunity to study and live in Italy, Switzerland, and the Republic of Ireland. He now resides in Richmond, where he is a middle school teacher of Latin and logic at Veritas School. Rene Olander is the author of American Dangerous, a collection of poems and the poetry chapbooks, A Few Spells and Wild Flights. She taught writing and literature for decades, and after 36 years at Old Dominion University, recently retired as Associate Vice President Emerita. She works as a freelance writer and advocate for social and environmental justice. Our alternate judge is Aubrey Whitlock, the Associate Director of Education Programming at the American Shakespeare Center. She has an MLIT and MFA in Shakespeare and performance from Mary Baldwin University. She was a full-time classroom teacher in middle and high schools and is a vehement proponent of public accessible scholarship. She also co-hosts the internationally recognized podcast, The Hurley Burley Shakespeare Show. Our accuracy judge is Lauren Miner, an educator, writer, and visual artist currently teaching writing at the Visual Arts Center of Richmond and at Randolph-Macon College. As the first artist in residence for the James River Park System, she facilitated a series of outdoor writing workshops where artists could create works inspired by the natural environment. She holds an MFA in creative writing and an MA in English from Virginia Commonwealth University. With that, are you all ready for a Poetry Out Loud recitation competition state finals? When I say poetry, you say out loud. Poetry. Out loud. Poetry. Out loud. 
Poetry. All right. Are you ready for your first contestants? Let's give it up for Arya Rajashekara. The Charge of the Light Brigade by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Half a league, half a league, half a league onward, all in the valley of death rode the 600. Forward the Light Brigade, charge for the guns, he said. Into the valley of death rode the 600. Forward the Light Brigade, was there a man dismayed? Not. Though the soldier knew someone had blundered, there's not to make reply, there's not to reason why, there's but to do and die. Into the valley of death rode the 600. Cannon to right of them, cannon to left of them, cannon in front of them, volleyed and thundered, stormed at with shot and shell. Boldly they rode, and well, into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell, rode the six hundred. Flashed all their sabers bare, flashed as they turned in air, sabering the gunners there, charging an army, while all the world wondered. Plunged in the battery smoke, right through the line they broke. Cossack and Russian reeled from the saber stroke, shattered and sundered. Then they rode back, but not, not the 600. Cannon to right of them, cannon to left of them, cannon behind them, volleyed and thundered, stormed at with shot and shell, while horse and hero fell. They that had fought so well came through the jaws of death back from the mouth of hell. All that was left of them, left of six hundred. When can their glory fade? Oh, the wild charge they made all the world wondered. Honor the charge they made. Honor the Light Brigade. Noble 600. Next up, from Independent School of Winchester, please uh, give a poetry out loud welcome for Molly Ridgely. The Witch by a Young Lady by Letitia Pilkington. I ask not wit, nor beauty do I crave, nor wealth, nor pompous titles, which you have. But since tis doomed through all degrees of life, whether a daughter, sister, or a wife, that females should the stronger males obey and yield implicit to their lordly sway. Since this, I say, is every woman's fate, give me a mind to suit my slavish state. Next up, from Collegiate High School, please, uh, let's give a poetry out loud welcome for Maya Zasler. Cartoon Physics, Part 1, by Nick Flynn. Children under, say, 10, shouldn't know that the universe is ever expanding inexorably pushing into the vacuum. Galaxies swallowed by galaxies, whole solar systems collapsing. All of it, 
acted out in silence. At 10, we are still learning the rules of cartoon animation, that if a man draws a door on a rock, only he can pass through it. Anyone else who tries will crash into the rock. Ten-year-olds should stick with burning houses, car wrecks, ships going down, earthbound, tangible disasters, arenas where they can be heroes. You can run back into a burning house. Sinking ships have lifeboats. The trucks will come with their ladders. If you jump, you will be saved. A child places her hand on the roof of a school bus and drives across a city of sand. She knows the exact spot it will skid, at which point the bridge will give, who will swim to safety, and who will be pulled under by sharks. She will learn that if a man runs off the edge of a cliff, he will not fall until he notices his mistake. Next up, from Woodgrove High School, let's give a poetry out loud welcome for Daniela Vitello. The Kiss by Robert Graves. Are you shaken? Are you stirred by a whisper of love, spellbound to a word? Does time cease to move to her calm gray eye extends to a sky and the clouds of her hair like storms go by. Then the lips that you have kissed turn to frost and fire and white steaming mist obscures desire. So back to their birth, fade water, air, earth, and the first power moves over void and earth. Is that love? <laughs> no, but death, a passion, a shout, the deep in-breath, the breath roaring out. And once that is flown, you must lie alone, without hope, without life, poor flesh, sad bone. Next up from Washington Liberty High School, let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Anna Mohanty. What Women Are Made Of by Bianca Lynn Spriggs. We are all ventricle, spine, lung, larynx, and gut, clavicle, and nape. What lies forked in an open in palm, we are follicle and temple, we are ankle, arch and soul, poor and rib, pelvis and root and tongue. We are wishbone and gland and molar and lobe, we are hippocampus, an exposed nerve and cornea. Areola, pigment, melanin, and nails. Vercocellulite, divining rod, sinew, and tissue. Saliva and silt, we are blood and salt. Clay and aquifer, we are breath and flame and stratosphere, palimpsest and bibolo and cloisonne, fine lines. Marigold, hydrangea, and dimple, night light, satellite, and stubble. We are pinnacle and plummet, dark circles and dark matter, a constellation of freckles and scepters and miracles. 
and lashes both bent and racked. We are all give and give back. We are Volta and Girder, make an incision in our nectary and paint to the lady sail forth, riding the back of a warm wind plumed with love and things like love. Crack us down to the meadow and you may find us full of cicada husks and sand dollars and salted maple taffy. Weary of welding together our daydreams all sweet tea, razor blades, carbon and patchwork quilts of good God. And Lord have mercy. Our hands remember how to turn the earth before we do our intestinal fortitude. Cumulo nimbus streaked with saffron light, our foundation, not in our limbs or in our hips. This comes first as an Amen, a hallelujah, a suckling, a swaddled psalm sung of the cosmos breast. Do you want to know what women are made of? Open wide and find out. Next up, uh, from Heritage High School, Let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Evelyn Bogus. Un Tintero, Inkwell, by Desiree Alvarez. Anger is the other person inside mi garganta, my throat. The mouth's mouth is the deepest. Rage is the homeless boy fallen down a well. Shout down, and he will echo back. La lengua, tongue. How long have you been down there, subterraneo, underground? The letters of Cortes are difficult to read. On each page, a horse dies. The lord of the city lives homeless in a canoe. Hundreds of natives are speared. Another town is burned alive with all its caged creatures. On each page, the people appear to walk over their dead. La tierra es cercolada. The earth fertilized spreads a cloth whose pattern repeats. On each page, the future arrives on a raft woven of snakes. Over and over, the design obliterates. Never does he say, this was their home we took. Next up, from Maggie Walker Governor School, let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Mallory Phillips. A Blessing by James Wright. Just off the highway to Rochester, Minnesota, twilight bounds softly forth on the grass, and the eyes of those two Indian ponies darken with kindness. They have come gladly out of the willows to welcome my friend and me. We step over the barbed wire into the pasture where they have been grazing all day, alone. They ripple tensely, they can hardly contain their happiness that we have come. 
they bow shyly as wet swans. They love each other. There is no loneliness like theirs. At home once more, they begin munching the young tufts of spring in the darkness. I would like to hold the slenderer one in my arms, for she has walked over to me and nuzzled my left hand. She is black and white. Her mane falls wild on her forehead, and the light breeze moves me to caress her long ear that is delicate as the skin over a girl's wrist. Suddenly, I realize that if I stepped out of my body, I would break into blossom. Are y'all having a good time out there? This is so much better than Netflix, let me tell you. Um, are you all ready for your next uh, reciter? From Battlefield High School, let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Campbell Lascodi. Ode for the American Dead in Asia by Thomas McGrath. One. God love you now, if no one else will ever. Corpse in the paddy or dead, on a high hill in the fine and ruinous summer of a war you never wanted. All your false flags were of bravery and ignorance, like grade school maps. Colors of countries you would never see until that weekend in eternity. When? Laughing, well-armed, perfectly ready to kill the world and your brother, the safe commander sent you into your future. Oh, dead on a hill, dead in a paddy, leached and tumbled to a tomb of footnotes. We mourn a changeling. You. Hands sell to poverty and drum to war by distinguished masters whom you never knew. Two, the bee that spins his metal from the sun, the shy mole drifting like a miner goes through midnight earth. All happy creatures run, as strict as trains on rails, the circuits of blind instinct. Happy in your summer follies, you mind a culture that was mined for war, the state to mold you, church to bless, and always the elders to confirm you in your ignorance. No scholar put your thinking cap on, nor warned that in dead seas fishes died in schools before inventing legs to walk the land. The rulers stuck a tennis racket in your hand. An ark against the flood, in time of change, courage is not enough. The blind mole dies. And you, on your hill, who did not know the rules. Three. Wet in the windy counties of the dawn, the lone crow skirls his draggled passage home. And God, whose sparrows fall aslant his gaze like grace or confetti, blinks and he is gone, and you are gone. Your scarecrow valor grows and rusts like early lilac, while the rose blooms in Dakota, and the stock exchange flowers. Roses, rents, all things conspire to crown your death with wreaths of living fire. And the public mourners come, the politic tear is cast in the forum. But in another year, 
we will mourn you. Whose fossil courage fills the limestone histories. Brave. Ignorant. Amazed. Dead. In the rice paddies. Dead. On the nameless hills. Next up from Norfolk Collegiate, let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Natalia Chapel. They buried their son last winter by Serhi Jedan, translated by John Hennessy. They buried their son last winter. Strange weather for winter. Rain. Thunder. They buried him quietly. Everybody's busy. Who did he fight for? I asked. We don't know, they say. He fought for someone, they say, but who? Who knows? Will it change anything, they say? What's the point now? I would have asked him myself, but now there's no need. And he wouldn't reply. He was buried without his head. It's the third year of war. They're repairing the bridges. I know so many things about you, but who would listen? I know, for example, the song you used to sing. I know your sister. I always had a thing for her. I know what you were afraid of and why, even. Who you met that winter. What you told him. The sky gleams full of ashes every night now. You always played for a neighboring school, but who did you fight for? To come here every year, to weed dry grass, to dig the earth every year. Heavy, lifeless. To see the calm after tragedy every year. To insist you didn't shoot at us, at your people. The birds disappear behind waves of rain to ask forgiveness for your sins, but what do I know about your sins? To beg the rain to finally stop. It's easier for birds who know nothing of salvation, the soul. Are you ready for your next recitation? All right, from Appomattox Regional Governor's School, let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Anthony Hernandez. My therapist wants to know about my relationship to work by Tiana Clark. I hustle, upstream. I grasp, I grind, I control and panic. Poke balloons in my chest, always pop in there. Always my thoughts thump, thump. I snooze, wake and go boom. All day like this, I short my breath. I scroll and scroll. I see what you wrote, I like. I heart my thumb so tired. My head bent down, but not in prayer. Heavy from the looking. I see your face, your phone-lit faces. I tap your food, two times for more hearts. I retweet, I email, yes and yes and yes. Then I cry and need to say no, no, no. Why does it take so long to reply? I FOMO and shout. I read, I never enough. New book, new post, new ping, a new tab, then another. Papers on the floor scattered and stacked. So many journals, unbroken white spines waiting. Did you hear that, Nunu? I start to text back. Ellipses, then I forget. I balk. I lazy the bed. I wallow when I write. I truth when I lie. I throw a book when a poem undoes me. I underline Clifton. Today, we are possible. I start from image. I begin with Phyllis Wheatley. I begin with Phyllis Wheatley. 
I begin with Phyllis Wheatley reaching for coal. I start with a napkin, receipt, or my hand. I muscle memory, I stutter the page, I fail. Hit delete, scratch out one more line, I sonnet. Then break form. I make tea. Use two bags. Rillabose. Again. I bathe now. Epsom salts. No books or phone, just water and the sound of water filling. Glory be my buoyant body bowl of me. Yes, lavender, more bubbles and bath bomb. Of course, some candles too. All alone with Coltrane, my favorite Naima for his wife, now for me, inside my own womb. Again, I child back, I float, I sing, I simple and humble. Eyes close, I low my voice. Was it a psalm? Don't know, but I stopped. From Blue Ridge Christian School, let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Madeline Monday. Insomnia by Dana Joya. Now you hear what the house has to say. Pipes clanking, water running in the dark, the mortgaged walls shifting in discomfort, and voices mounting in an endless drone of small complaints, like the sounds of a family that year by year you've learned how to ignore. But now you must listen to the things you own, all that you've worked for these past years. The murmur of property, of things in disrepair, the moving parts about to come undone. And twisting in the sheets, remember all the faces you could not bring yourself to love. How many voices have escaped you until now? The venting furnace, the floorboards underfoot, the steady accusations of the clock, numbering the minutes, no one will mark. The terrible clarity this moment brings, the useless insight, the unbroken dark. Next up, uh, let's give a Big poetry out loud. Welcome from St. Catherine's School, Catherine Price. Oranges by Roisin Kelly. I'll choose for myself next time who I'll reach out and take as mine. In the way I might stand at a fruit stall, having decided to ignore the apples, the mangoes, and the kiwis, but hold my hands above a pile of oranges, as if to warm my skin before a fire. Not only have I chosen oranges, but will also choose which orange. I'll test a few for firmness, Scrape some rind off with my fingernail so that a citrus scent will linger there all day. I won't be happy with the first one I pick, but we'll try different ones until I know you. How will I know you? You'll feel warm between my palms, and I'll cup you like a handful of holy water. A vision will come to me of your exotic land. The sun you swelled under the tree you grew from. A drift of white blossoms from the orange tree will settle in my hair. And I'll know. This is how I will choose you. By feeling you. Smelling you. By slipping you into my coat. Maybe then I'll climb the hill. Look down on the town we live in. With sunlight on my face, and a miniature sun burning a hole in my pocket. Thirsty, I'll suck the juice from it. 
from you. When I walk away, I'll leave behind a trail of lamp bright rind. That concludes our first round of recitations. We will have a brief intermission and return to enjoy a performance by the Meadowbrook High School Choir. All right, y'all, y'all did good. Let's give it up for these students. They are amazing. When I say chorale, you say rocks. Chorale. Rocks. Chorale. Rocks. The Monarch Chorale is a premier ensemble at Meadowbrook High School Choir and is directed by the incomparable Marissa Parsons. Ms. Parsons has been teaching for 20 years as a music educator. Shout out to all the educators. She is also a performer and a soprano soloist with a background in opera. Without any further ado, the Monarch Chorale. <laughs>
Once again, a big hand for the Monarch Chorale from Meadowbrook High School. Hello, I am Reggie Kibiko, the Ryan Seacrest of Poetry Out Loud. <laughs> to begin round two, following the recitation order from round one, students will identify their poem and author. After round two, we will take a brief break and identify the top three students who will advance to round three to determine today's state champion. Are you all ready for your first recitation? From Catholic High School, let's give a big Poetry Out Loud welcome for Arya Rajashikara. Invictus by William Ernest Henley. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud under the bludgeonings of chance. My head is bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Next up, from Independent School of Winchester, let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Molly Ridgely. How to Triumph Like a Girl by Ada Lamone. I like the lady horses best. How they make it all look easy. Like running 40 miles per hour is as fun as taking a nap or grass. I like their lady horse swagger after winning. Ears up, girls, ears up. But mainly, let's be honest. I like that they're ladies, as if this big, dangerous animal is also a part of me. That's somewhere inside the delicate skin of my body there pumps an eight-pound female horse heart, giant with power, heavy with blood. Don't you want to believe it? Don't you want to lift my shirt into the huge, beating genius machine? That thinks. No, it knows. It's going to come in first. Next up from Collegiate High School, let's give a big Poetry Out Loud welcome for Maya Zassler. The Conqueror Worm by Edgar Allan Poe. Lo, tis a gallinite within the lonesome latter years, an angel throng bewinged, bedight in veils and drowned in tears. Sit in a theater to see a play of hopes and fears while the orchestra breathes fitfully the music of the spheres. Mimes in the form of God on high mutter and mumble low and hither and thither fly mere puppets they who come and go at bidding of vast formless things that shift the scenery to and fro flapping from out their condor wings, invisible woe. 
That motley drama, oh, be sure it shall not be forgot, with its phantom chased forevermore by a crowd that sees it not, through a circle that ever returneth into the selfsame spot, and much of madness, and more of sin, and horror, the soul of the plot. But see, amid the mimic rout, a crawling shape intrude, a blood-red thing that writhes from out the scenic solitude. It writhes, it writhes, with mortal pangs the mimes become its food, and seraphs sob at vermin fangs in human gore imbued. Out, out are the lights, out all, and over each quivering form the curtain, a funeral pall comes down with the rush of a storm while the angels, all pallid and wan, uprising, unveiling, affirm that the play is the tragedy, man, and its hero, the conqueror worm. Next up, from Woodgrove High School, let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Daniela Vitello. The Light, the Dead Sea by Robert, by Frank Stanford. <laughs> there are many people who come back after the doctor had smoothed the sheet around their body and left the room to make his call. They die, but they live. They are called the dead who lived through their deaths. And among my people, they are considered wise and honest. They flow out of their bodies and light on the ceiling like a moth, watching the efforts of everyone around them. The light and the voices and the lights of the images of the living fade away. A roar sucks them under, the wheels of a darkness without pain. Off in the distance, there is someone, like a signalman, swinging a lantern. The light grows, a white flower, it becomes very intense, like music. They see the, the faces of those they loved, the truly dead who speak kindly. They see their father sitting in a field. The harvest is over, and his cane chair is mended. There's a towel around his neck, the odor of bay rum. Then they see their mother standing behind him, with, holding a pair of shears. The wind is blowing. She is cutting his hair. The dead have told these stories to the living. Thank you. Next up, from Washington Liberty High School, let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Anna Mohanty. Grain Memory by Marlanda DeKine. A wishbone branch falls from my grandma Thelma's oak for me. What do you know about magic, he asks. He bends the old body down, turns the wishbone branch into a cross, places it around my neck, I am strapped at the Black River's right shoulder, remembering my grandpa Moe's never wore anything but church. My purple head begins to feel cold as clergy parched. I ask for water. He gives me water and rice. He says to repeat after M. I am fly from nature. Nature fly. I am fly from Nature, nature, fly, I am, fly from. Nature, nature, fly, I am, fly from. Nature, nature, fly, I am, fly 
From nature, nature, fly I am, fly. From nature, nature, fly. Ah, I get it. It's an affirmation, I say, and he laughs in wind, ocean songs, he whispers. Do not be trapped by language. His voice begins to beat my chest cavity in rhythm, chaff threshed from grain, separating me from need. I thought I'd snapped that wishbone branch myself. No, I am fly from nature, nature fly. At dusk, gleaming marigolds gather beneath my feet, singing. We were stolen, shipped across the Atlantic. Invasive is a word I heard, stolen. Thrash, thrash, thrash. And we speak in bloom. Next up from Heritage High School, let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Evelyn Bogus. Meeting at an Airport by Taha Muhammad Ali. You asked me once on our way back from the mid-morning trip to the spring, what do you hate and who do you love? And I answered from behind the eyelashes of my surprise, my blood rushing like the shadow cast by a cloud of starlings. I hate departure. I love the spring and the path to the spring and I worship the middle hours of morning. And you laughed, and the almond tree blossomed, and the thicket grew loud with nightingales. A question now four decades old, I salute that question's answer. And an answer as old as your departure, I salute that answer's question. And today, it's preposterous. Here we are at a friendly airport by the slimmest of chances, and we meet. Ah, oh, Lord, we meet, and here you are asking again. It's absolutely preposterous. I recognized you, but you didn't recognize me. Is it you? But you wouldn't believe it, and suddenly you burst out and asked if you're really you. What do you hate, and who do you love? And I answered, my blood fleeing the hall, rushing in me like the shadow cast by a cloud of starlings. I hate departure. And I love the spring and the path to the spring, and I worship the middle hours of morning. And you wept, and flowers bowed their heads, and doves in the silk of their sorrow stumbled. When I say poetry, you say out loud, poetry. Out loud. Poetry. Out loud. Poetry, are you all having fun? We are at the halfway point. Um, next up, from Maggie Walker Governor School, let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Mallory Phillips. Respiration by Jamal May.
a lot of it lives in the trachea, you know? But not so much that you won't need more muscle. The diaphragm, a fist clenching at the bottom. Inhale. So many of us are breathless, you know? Like me, kneeling to collect the pottery shards of the houseplant my elbow has nudged into oblivion. What if I sighed and the black earth beneath me scattered like insects running from my breath? Am I a god then? Am I insane because I worry about the disassembling of Earth regularly? I walk more softly now, into gardens or up the steps of old houses with impatience stuffed in their window boxes. When it's you standing there with a letter or voice or face full of solemn news, will you hold your breath before you knock? Next up from Battlefield High School, let's show a big poetry out loud welcome for Campbell Lescody. An Apology for Her Poetry by Duchess of Newcastle, Margaret Cavendish. I language want to dress my fancies in, the hairs uncurled, the garments loose and thin. Had they but silver lace to make them gay, they'd be more corded than in poor array. Or, had they art, would make a better show. But they are plain, yet cleanly do they go. The world in bravery doth take the light, and glistering shows do more attract the sight. And everyone doth honor a rich hood, as if the outside made the inside good. And everyone doth bow and give the place, not for the man's sake, but the silver lace. Let me entreat, in my poor book's behalf, that all will not adore the golden calf. Consider, pray, gold hath no life therein, and life in nature is the richest thing. Be just. Let fancy have the upper place. And then my verses may perchance find grace. Next up from Norfolk Collegiate, let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Natalia Chapel. This is The Honey by Mahogany L. Brown. There is no room on this planet for anything less than a miracle. We gather here today to revel in the rebellion of a silent tongue. Every day we lean forward into the light of our brightest designs and cherish the sun, praise our hands and throats, each incantation a jubilee of a people dreaming wildly. Despite the dirt beneath our feet or the wind pushing against our greatest efforts, soil creates things. Art births change. This is the honey, and doesn't it taste like a promise where your heart is an accordion and our laughter is a soundtrack? Friend, dance to this good song. Look how it holds our names. Each bone of our flesh home sings welcome. A look at the gods dancing as the rain rains against a steely skyline where grandparents sit on the porch and nod at the spectacle in awe of the perfection of their grandchildren's faces. Each small discovery unearthed its own outpour. 
Tomorrow, our daughters will travel the world with each poem, and our sons will design cities against the backdrops of living museums. Yes, our children will spin chalk until each equation bursts a familial tree, rooted in miraculous possibilities and alive. Next up, from Appomattox Regional Governor School, let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Anthony Hernandez. Insomnia by Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Thin are the night skirts left behind by daybreak hours that onward creep, and thin, alas, the shred of sleep that wavers with the spirit's wind, but in half dreams that shift and roll, and still remember and forget, my soul this hour has drawn your soul a little nearer yet. Our lives most dear are never near, our thoughts are never far apart, though all that draws us heart to heart seems fainter now, and now more clear. Tonight, love claims his full control, and with desire and with regret, my soul this hour draws your soul a little nearer yet. Is there a home where heavy earth melts to bright air that breathes no pain, where water leaves no thirst again, and springing fire is love's new birth. If faith long bound to one true goal, may there at its hope be yet. My soul that hour shall draw your soul forever nearer yet. Next up from Blue Ridge Christian School, let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Madeline Monday. Early Affection by George Moses Horton. I'd love thee from the earliest dawn, when first I saw thy beauty's ray, and will until life's eve comes on, and beauty's blossom fades away, and when all things go well with thee, with smiles and tears remember me. I'll love thee when thy morn is past and wheedling gallantry is o'er, when youth is lost in age's blast and beauty can ascend no more, and when life's journey ends with thee, oh, then look back and think of me. I'll love thee with a smile or frown, mid sorrow's gloom or pleasure's light. And when the chain of life runs down, pursue thy last eternal flight. When thou hast spread thy wing to flee, still, still, a moment wait for me. I'll love thee for those sparkling eyes to which my fondness was betrayed, bearing the tincture of the skies to glow when other beauties fade. And when they sink too low to see, reflect an azure beam on me. From St. Catherine's School, next up, please show a big poetry out loud welcome for Catherine Price. Thoughtless Cruelty by Charles Lamb. There, Robert, you've killed that fly. And should you, thousand ages, try the life you've taken to supply, you could not do it. You surely must have been devoid of thought and sense to have destroyed a thing which no way you annoyed. You'll one day rue it. Twas but a fly perhaps you'll say, that's born in April, dies in May, that does but just learn to display his wings one minute, and in the next is vanished quite. 
a bird devours it in his flight, or come a cold blast in the night, there's no breath in it. The bird but seeks his proper food, and providence, whose power endued that fly with life, when it thinks good, may justly take it. But you have no excuses for it. A life by nature made so short, less reason is that you, for sport, should shorter make it. A fly, a little thing you rate, but, Robert, do not estimate a creature's pain by small or great. The greatest being can have but fibers, nerves, and flesh, and these the smallest ones possess, although their frame and structure less escape our seeing. Can we give a big warm round of applause for these incredible young people, these young students, these high school students? Um, this concludes round two. Um, we were going to take a short break, and I'm going to tell you who our three finalists are. I'm so inspired by what Poetry Out Loud is doing to hear these students today. I really loved it. Um, I've judged other competitions where students wrote their own poems, um, but it was a very, it was a different experience re hearing people recite poems that I've read before and reciting them in ways that I hadn't read them, but they, you know, brought more meaning to the poem than even when I read it on my own. Because it's not just the academic piece, it's the emotional piece. And anytime we give kids a chance to connect with their emotions, that's really important and really powerful. I always started my poetry unit with song lyrics to help my students kind of come into these words, these forms in a way that was familiar. It wasn't scary, it wasn't intimidating. Bring in the lyrics of your favorite song and we would dissect those as poems. Students today often do not go to the written word they are going to first go to music and then discover the written word that's behind it. I tell my students, you listen to poetry every day because they listen to music constantly and letting them know that that is poetry kind of opens that door for them as well. What music does is it gives them easier access to how there is a rhythm to words and it, and it creates and instills in them an easy access to that content. Students are getting engaged in literacy by interacting with these poems on the cellular level. They're looking at the word, they're studying it, they're thinking about the timing of it. Providing this opportunity to students is something that they can see, hey, I could end up doing this, I could write poetry and make something of it, or recite poetry and actually make it far in a national competition. So often they feel they don't have a voice and this program really gives them a voice through literature. Emotionally, mentally, physically to succeed. The arts gives our students a safe place to be where they can connect, where they can collaborate, and where they can create. And anything that we can do as educators to make them feel they have a place I think is invaluable and certainly worth celebrating. And the poems that the students read today, so many of them were about finding connection and looking at the big questions and how do I fit into this very large system. And they did it beautifully. Um, before I announce the winners, I want to give a shout out um, to the Virginia Commission for the Arts. Can we give them a big, big, huge round of applause? Um, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Jessica Peterson, who has co been coordinating this. Isn't she incredible? I also um, can't shout out Jessica Peterson without acknowledging um, the work that Casey Polchinski has laid out. Um, uh, so can we give it up for Casey Polchinski? Who has really been uh, bringing the whole Commonwealth together um, and, and some talented students. Um, so, that said, um, I'm going to announce 
who our three finalists are in no particular order. I'm going to read them in the order in which they have performed. So, our three finalists are from Heritage High School, Evelyn Bogus. From Appomattox Regional Governor's School, Anthony Hernandez. And from St. Catherine School, Catherine Price. Congratulations. I do want to say that any 12 of you would represent the Commonwealth, Virginia, um, wonderfully. These are our three poets. They're going to go and they will perform in that order. So um, I want to say this. Judges, are you ready? Yes. yes. Audience, are you ready? All right. Uh, for our third round, please help me welcome from Heritage High School. Let's give a big poetry out loud welcome for Evelyn Bogus. Songs for the People by Frances Ellen Watkins Harper. Let me make the songs for the people, songs for the old and young, songs to stir like a battle cry wherever they are sung, not for the clashing of sabers for carnage nor for strife, but songs to thrill the hearts of men with more abundant life. Let me make the songs for the weary amid life's fever and fret, Till hearts shall relax their tension and careworn brows forget. Let me sing for little children before their footsteps stray, sweet anthems of love and duty to float o'er life's highway. I would sing for the poor and aged when shadows dim their sight of the bright and restful mansions where there shall be no night. Our world, so worn and weary, needs music pure and strong to hush the jangle and discords of sorrow, pain, and wrong music to soothe all its sorrow, till war and crime shall cease, and the hearts of men, grown tender, girdle the world with peace. Let's give a big poetry out loud, round three, welcome for from Appomattox Regional Governor's School, Anthony Hernandez. Recess by Maria Hummel. This is the sound of the bell. It rings full of brass and the end it brings. Once for the children, once for the child who sits alone. His eyes hurt and mild, he waits, holding his things. Time should hold no meaning for him yet. You don't learn how to play, you forget. But he knows a while well and longs for the clang of the bell. A bell is a room of nothing. No, a dome with a hidden swing, a will, a sway, a tone, a peal, the beginning of song. The wild crowd nears, passes, laughing. Here is the sound of the bell. From St. Catherine's School, let's give a big poetry out loud. Round three, welcome for Catherine Price. In Wictus by William Ernest Henley. 
out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole. I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade. And yet, the menace of all the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. That was Catherine Price from St. Catherine School. Congratulations. Let's give a big warm round of applause for our three finalists. That concludes our third and final round of recitations today. While the judges are tabulating their scores, I would like to introduce you to Margaret Hancock, the Executive Director of the Virginia Commission for the Arts, which helped make all this possible. Good afternoon. Thank you, Reggie, for that introduction. I'm so pleased to be here with you today for such a unique opportunity to celebrate the literary arts. The impact of the Poetry Out Loud program is undeniable as Virginia's students, teachers, poets, art enthusiasts, and partners all come together. In 18 years, the Poetry Out Loud program has inspired hundreds of thousands of Virginia's youth to engage with poetry, and in doing so, has elevated their skills as readers, orators, and leaders, certainly as we saw here today. And none of this would be possible without the incredible support and participation of so many. I'd like to take a moment now to acknowledge those who are lifting the entire state through Poetry Out Loud. First, the National Endowment for the Arts and Poetry Foundation. Their support enables the Virginia Commission for the Arts to bring the Poetry Out Loud experience to high school students across the Commonwealth. Thank you as well to Brian Lane for performing the opening today. We also acknowledge our judges throughout the program who dedicate their time and expertise for the benefit of our students. Thank you as well to the school administrators and teachers who coordinate the program at the school level. In doing so, they provide this exposure to poetry and serve as the catalyst for the programs and ultimately the students' successes. This is further supported by the parents and caretakers of the students, many of whom are here today. Just a couple of VCA shout outs too. Uh, new this year to the VCA team is Jessica Peterson, Poetry Out Loud's program coordinator, whose dedication has allowed for this to be one of our most successful years to date. Thank you, Jessica, for all of your hard work on this incredible program. We are also joined today and will be joined on stage by one of uh, the VCA's 13 commissioners, Frazier Armstrong, and we will see Frazier up here in just a moment. And certainly, I want to acknowledge the participating students. You are the heart and the impetus and the lifeline of this program. And whether you took advantage of Poetry Out Loud as a class requirement, as a passion project, or as a personal growth opportunity, we truly applaud you. One of our teaching artists within our VCA community recently spoke to the importance of engaging the next generation. He noted that if you don't engage the next generation of artists, they aren't going to be here. So thank you. Thank you to those who are here today. Thank you to the more than 5,000 students who participated in this year's Poetry Out Loud program. Thank you for allowing us to engage with you through the arts. Thank you for being the next generation, not only of artists, but of leaders. Virginia is truly so fortunate to have each and every one of you living and learning and engaging in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Thank you. Today's awards will be presented by VCA Commissioner Frazier Milner Armstrong. Our second runner-up 
is Anthony Hernandez. Our first runner up is Catherine Price. That means that Evelyn Bogus, you are our Poetry Out Loud Virginia 2023 champion. Congratulations to you and those who have supported you through Poetry Out Loud. We would like to thank the Virginia Commission for the Arts, the National Endowment for the Arts, and the Poetry Foundation for their support of the Poetry Out Loud program in Virginia. In addition, we would like to thank Rosa Bosher and the Great Big Greenhouse for their financial support of today's broadcast. Many thanks goes to VPM for hosting and producing the Virginia Finals. Thank you for coming. Good night. actually inspired to start Poetry Out Loud um, by my freshman English teacher who's actually here today. Thank you. She um, really got me into Poetry Out Loud. She promoted it for our class and she specifically came up to me, told me that this would be a great program for me to get involved in and she didn't have to tell me twice. I was so excited about it. Um, it's been a long journey over the four years, pandemic in the middle, and being here now is it's mind-blowing, it's incredible. I've been a fan of poetry since before I could really understand maybe the deeper context, but just appreciating the sounds of it. And I've always been a fan of music as well. Um, I'm a singer and an actor as well, so getting those different aspects in and being able to express them through poetry out loud is pretty incredible. My skill for public speaking and feeling comfortable on the stage, acting, singing, is something I've done for a long time, but there's nothing quite like the feeling of interpreting a whole poem at once. Really, it's so personal, but being able to share that and being in front of this audience, making your own story from it is, it's fascinating.